Successful concurrent engineering is a partnership that pulls the best from both companies. As they melt together, you get more than the sum. You get something that is above and beyond what you start with. One of the major attributes that makes Pioneer successful is our ability to work directly with our customers' engineering groups. That success comes in an evolutionary phase. We start with rough drawings that can be done on a napkin. That's concurrent engineering. I've done it many times. Uh, we joke about it, but in reality, it's how it starts. It's the concept, it's the thought of it. It's part of the fun of it too. You see something evolve from a napkin drawing to the evolution of a space mission. The number one success was for a 30 layer rigid flex that had never been built before, especially for a space mission. NASA's JPL Mars Pathfinder was the first mission to Mars for a rover. No one across the United States even bid on the program to make that 30 layer rigid flex. Yet it was made and produced a fantastic avenue for JPL and NASA to go down with a robotics program. We're talking about successes, but we might as well talk about some failures. There was a mission called the Millennium Probes. We were very excited about it. We're gonna make some basketball shaped uh, flex circuitry that we're gonna penetrate down into the Mars ground, maybe a meter down, and then send back signals of what things are like below the surface of Mars. Fantastic. It had two groups working on it, especially the electronics versions. One was with a major customer in the aerospace industry, the other was JPL. As it launched and took off, everything looked good. It kept going, circled Mars, just fantastic. And I'm watching it on TV and all of a sudden, bam, nothing. There was a slight miscalculation, and I mean really slight. Instead of meters, it was measured in miles. So it made it to the planet, Mars, okay, but that was it. When they tried to go into descent mode, they hit the planet, it made a couple of big craters, but that was about it. Meters and miles don't mix. This is a good example of how concurrent engineering could have helped resolve these type of issues. When you work together and partner together, you very rarely have these kind of surprises at the end. One of the components of concurrent engineering is to make mock-ups. The mock-up is a simulated part, rigid flex typically, that will allow them to do a mechanical check to see if the part is gonna fit into the chassis before you actually spend the money to make something that's not gonna work. It's one of the key elements to success is trying these mock-ups. Hello, I'm Jim Whalen, Design Engineering Manager at Pioneer Circuits. Some examples of mock-ups that would be useful for you are a circuit like this that has multiple connections and you can get a feel for the flexibility as you're installing. You can put this in your box and see if it's going to fit. These will tell you what you need to know. I had some funny things happen to us when we offered this service to a major aerospace company. The guy said, ah, I don't think I need that. I said, well, you're gonna have 25 layers bending around a pretty sharp bend here. Uh, I can make that for you, no charge. It's much better to find out, ah, I don't think I need that. Okay, well, let's see how it goes. So I got a call about three weeks later after we had produced the first part. Went in and looked at it and as I walked in the door, I saw one engineer with his foot on top of the chassis lid trying to push it down and the flex, poor flex sicking out the edge and a guy with a screwdriver trying to push it back in. And I go, oh God, this is not going too good. Uh, uh, that's probably not the best thing you could do there. And the guy looked at what can we do? I said, we can try an S-bend there to try and get that loose piece back in. However, it's one of the key elements to success is trying these mock-ups. And you know what? That guy is a long-standing user of mock-ups to this day. There's a possibility of water on Mars 
that is coming out of cliffs that the larger rovers can't get to. The small collapsible rover can be sent there on a lander and investigate these cliffs without jeopardizing large dollars or the vehicle themselves. It's never been done before. It's a first. This represents the evolution in concurrent engineering for the Puffer robot. The first design had several issues and kind of hit the wall. As it evolved through and the testing proceeded, we ended up using a composite material compatible with the Rigiflex technology. This was the first time this technology of woven fabric had ever been used in a micro rover. This concurrent engineering effort between JPL and Pioneer resulted in the first successful collapsible rover that had ever been considered for a Mars mission. Uh, this has opened the window for brand new applications never before used in this industry. Showing them what is available and what could be done with the technology today opens the world for them. It is one of the key elements that makes these missions successful.